Airplanes are feats of modern engineering that gracefully dominate the skies. But when landing, they're just a humongous heap of metal tumbling down the runway at breakneck speeds. So unless you actually want a heap of metal at the end of the runway, you need to figure out how to get it to a complete stop. Which begs the question, how do airplanes stop when landing? Three mechanisms are involved when pilots try to stop a plane after landing. 1. The brakes on the wheels, obviously. 2. The spoilers on the wings. And 3. Reverse thrust created by the engine. Brakes on commercial airplanes are just like those on your cars. You have pistons that push on discs connected to the wheels to create friction. They're just much bigger. Instead of one or two pistons, you have several arranged in a circle that apply pressure on a stack of discs that alternate between stationary stators and rotating rotors. So when the pilot steps on the brakes, the tremendous amount of friction created by those discs stop the rotors as well as the wheels that are attached to it. But remember, the wheels need to firmly touch the ground for the brakes to work. However, those pesky wings are really good at their jobs and will try to lift the plane off the ground again, ruining all the efforts poured in by the brakes. That's where the spoilers come in. When the plane lands, the spoilers will elevate in order to spoil the airflow over the wings. This has three major effects. One, it interrupts the lift that's usually created by the wings. Two, it creates drag that helps slow down the plane. And three, it pushes the plane down, increasing the contact between the tire and the ground, which makes the brakes more effective. The brakes assisted by the spoilers are very good at their job, but can always use some help. If you ever sat next to an engine on an airplane, you will have noticed that the panels on the sides of the engine open right after touchdown. These openings divert bypass air of the engines to create what is known as reverse thrust. When it's raining or snowing, you can even see the reverse thrust throwing water and snow in front of the engine. While reverse thrust is interesting to watch, usually it's the brakes that do most of the job. But when it's raining or snowing, reverse thrust is crucial because they're not affected by the negative conditions on the ground. And that's how you stop a 100-ton commercial jet plane on the runway. Stick side.